Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a IGN interview Mero has done. And we're just going to talk about some of the quotations that he has. So the IGN interview is called Magic the Gathering Developer Responds to Fears It's Only Focused on Short Term Profits. Now why would he need to make this article? Well, because exactly what you guys said, that they only focus on short-term profits and it really does in my opinion feel that way a lot of the decision making i don't think will take a long time uh or i think it's not long term the health of magic the gathering i think a lot of these decisions are short-term cash money grabs especially in edh think about this edh is the one format they didn't create Yet, it's the only format that makes money. Uh, no one plays standard. Very few people play standard right now. And for good reason. There's just not um, the growth in Magic the Gathering in terms of standard and draft. The growth is all in EDH. It's, if this card is playable in EDH, sure, let's play it. If this card is not playable in EDH, well, we don't really want it anymore. So this is a big problem because they didn't come up with EDH. Remember, EDH was com- came up by Magic the Gathering players themselves. So every format that they've come up with has failed. Uh, Vintage is no longer here. Legacy is dead. Extended was dead. I don't know how many people play Pioneer. I'm guessing not a ton. And uh, Modern, also kind of dead. People go, oh, no, I play my note. Like, when's the last time you went to your local game store and saw a game of Modern? It's always EDH. At least the game stores I still go to to buy random stuff. Mostly storage things from my other card games. Storage boxes, those 500 count boxes. I have never seen nobody play no Modern or Standard. I just see them. I don't, I just see, don't, don't see them drafting. I just see them playing EDH at all given times. So let's read what Meryl has to say. We really do try to look at what's going to make Magic have its best chance of lasting for a very long time. Our goal is not to make the quickest buck we can and call it a day, Mark Rosewater. Like the fact that like you have to say this is is crazy. Like the fact that like you have to say this exact sentence, that means a lot of people do believe your goal is to make the quickest buck possible and call it a day. Right? Because you are rejecting that idea we're always forward facing our goal is not to make the quickest buck we can call and call it a day magic is 31 years old we plan to be here as long as we can and so we are constantly forward thinking of how we do things we want to make something we honestly believe that the players to their core will enjoy again mark rosewater it was a product, uh, we got a lot of data at set that said Aftermath did not work, and we killed it. Troop recall, it was a product that was also supposed to go out with Outlaws of Thunder Junction. There was a nice chunk of revenue associated with the product. We're like, nope, this is not going to see the light of day. We're going to kill this. So, remember when Alpha Investment said that Aftermath was like a great investment? <laughs> well, it was so bad, they actually got rid of Aftermath. So, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, there is no more aftermath, so that that's a standalone set. Troop told a story about the team sitting down to write the principles of Magic R and D, roughly a decade ago, citing the first principle as the following: "We are storage of Magic. We believe Magic will last forever, and we want Magic to be bigger tomorrow than it is today." People just want want to attribute i don't know it's the nature of the internet of like they're up to no good or they don't have our issues in mind rosewater said in a similar line of thinking we very much care that what players think we do surveys and everything oh god survey though remember they were doing all these surveys but they never actually talked to like local players or game stores i remember there was like some type of drama that happened and it was basically just twitter so it turned out that like their survey was essentially a twitter post and they were making decisions based on their Twitter audience, which is very, very, very left-leaning. Right, rainbow hair, you guys get the point. And they actually had never gone to a game store to interview like a, a game store owner. They never went to a game store to talk to the players, even though they had a game store right si- outside Wizards of the Coast. They just did like a Twitter survey. And that was their market research. 
I think that's why this stuff is like so wonky all the time is like, yeah, if you're going to do a Twitter, you're going to, if you're going to make a business decision based on Twitter, it's going to seem really, really crazy. We don't want to just make something. We want to make something we honestly believe that the players to their core will enjoy and that drives our decisions. We really do try to look at what's going to make Magic have its best chance of lasting for a very long time. That is Ken Troop. Sometimes we'll get that wrong, but that is our motivation every time. I'm going to read some of the comments. It's not the Magic I grew up with, but I suppose I'm glad a new audience is enjoying the game. I think Magic is, as much as can be expected, a massive global product in good hands. I don't like most of the decisions Wizard of Coast make these days, but I do think they are motivated by what they claim. A desire to make Magic bigger and better. The moment the crossovers happened was the moment they revealed they were after a quick buck. Sure, it was always about that, but at least there was a game behind it. Now, not really. Yes, it is popular right now because the crossovers are new. They have lured in new crowds, but this is the problem. They see the dollar signs from that and have tried to capitalize on it. Every time you turn a corner, there is a new collab and deck coming out. At some point, they will reach a saturation point and there will be too much to manage and the game will start to erode because you can only handle so many cards and decks while maintaining integrity of the game. Money is clearly driving this, not concerned about the game's integrity and longevity. Let's be honest, the game is already starting to erode. In terms of gameplay, more sets are a miss than a hit at this point, and I don't see that trend improving. Bloomborough was surprisingly fun, but everything else that's come out in the last year has been a real disappointment. All you have to consider is that there are a lot of variations of magic these days. Pick what you like and stick with it. Just because the game changes and adds new things does not mean you and your friends have to adapt to it. Now, digital versions of the game, that's another story. They didn't really address the amount of product. That's what really kills me. It's just so much to keep up with. I dropped out of standard because I felt so squeezed financially that I just give up, gave up pl trying to play it. And Alchemy is just more cards on top of standard. Historic, I'm missing too many cards. Timeless was fun, but it was mega expensive and is like a win by turn free format dominated by a select few decks. And the cards added to it or extra rare treasure type cards and new sets. I think this is probably a digital player. Forget having fun brainstorming decks if you're not a master brewer or a streamer, at least on arena. Yeah, arena. Pretty much all humanity needs to respond to fears that it's that oh it's only focus on short term profit. Yeah, I mean that's like all of humanity, <laughs> just Magic the Gathering, right? So, uh, yeah, MetaZoo.